just into CNN, new reporting shows immigration and customs enforcement raids targeting as many as 2,000 migrants is set to start this Sunday. This was triggered by President Trump's tweet. So breaking this new reporting for us, CNN's justice correspondent Jessica Schneider. Jessica, tell me more. Yeah, Brooke, this is all starting in just a few days. Sunday, that's when Immigration and Customs Enforcement, they're set to start their latest operation. They'll be arresting and deporting families who have been ordered by a court to be removed from this country. So essentially accelerating what's already been ordered by a judge. Now, this operation, as you mentioned, it's set to begin just days after the president's tweet on Monday, where he warned that millions of illegal aliens will be removed. And we're learning, of course, that it won't be millions off the bat, but instead this ICE operation will target approximately 2,000 people. And Brooke, that corresponds with the 2,000 people that ICE sent letters to in February asking them to essentially self-report to ICE offices to comply with those court-ordered removal orders that they'd been given. And we've talked to immigration officials who say that plans for this operation, they, they've actually been in the works, but that the operation was likely prioritized after the president's tweet on Monday. So we've also learned that the acting head of DHS, Kevin McAleenan, he's actually been hesitant about aspects of this removal that targets families, obviously because of concerns about again being accused of separating families. But the new acting ICE director, Mark Morgan, he has been adamant and he stressed it to reporters earlier this week. He said, look, if you're here legally, you should be removed. So that's the mantra going forward. So Brooke, we've learned that this operation will unfold in several large cities where DHS has already been tracking family cases in immigration courts. That includes Atlanta, Baltimore, Chicago, Denver, Houston, LA, Miami, New York, New Orleans, and San Francisco. And we have learned that the removal likely won't be immediate. Instead, here's how it'll play out. Families will be taken into custody and then moved to ICE family residential detention centers. And that's where agency workers will gather up the family's travel documents and then eventually remove those families. So this is a process here, and this appears really to be swift action taken by the administration all after that tweet from the president on Monday, Brooke. So we expect that this will start in those 10 cities on Sunday. And Brooke, we've heard from adv advocacy groups and they say that they are ready to mobilize on Sunday, perhaps to try to stop some of these ICE agents from moving forward. Brooke? Just instantly think of families, some members may be citizens, some may not, how that would right. even work. Jessica Schneider, we will be watching those 10 cities and well, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll cover all of this starting uh, Sunday. Thank you so much for, for the reporting and the heads up. We are also learning disturbing horrific new details about conditions at some border facilities. A team of doctors, lawyers and advocates paid a visit to two centers in Texas where they said virtually everyone was sick and living in quote unconscionable conditions. Conditions. One researcher says kids are left to fend for themselves, kids are taking care of babies, kids are sleeping on the floor, and some are staying in rooms with no windows. Many don't even have shoes or socks. Warren Benford is a law professor at uh, Willamette University. She was part of the team who interviewed these migrant children. So Warren, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing some of what you saw. Just tell me what it was you witnessed with your own eyes. Brooke, we were uh, just shocked by the in inhumane conditions that hundreds of children were being kept in at the Clint Porter facility outside of El Paso, Texas. This was a facility that wasn't even on our radar screen until last week when we heard that a significant number of children appeared to be moved to this facility, which is an adult border patrol facility. Once we saw the roster with the children there, we saw that there were infants, toddlers, preschoolers, school-age children, over 350 of them on Monday when we arrived. We immediately started to bring the uh, youngest children in there and the children who appeared to have been held there the longest and started to ask them about conditions. The children were dirty. They were sad. Many of them were sick. We found out that there was an influenza outbreak there, that children are being put into isolation, that children are sleeping on concrete floors. They're reporting not um, being able to sleep at night because mm. of the conditions. Some of them are sleeping on cement blocks. Mm. They are not being fed adequate amounts of food. They're being given no 
no fruit, no vegetables, the same instant foods every single day, day after day. The children don't have anyone to care for them, and so the guards are bringing in younger children who have been taken away from their parents or other family members and are asking, who in this room wants to take care of this little boy or this little girl? The children, no some of them are seven or eight years old and are being asked to take care of toddlers or preschoolers, and they simply don't know how. So we had a two-year-old boy who was brought to us with no diaper. When I, when I asked the little girl why he didn't have a diaper on, she said that he didn't need one, and he immediately peed in front of me right there in the conference conference room chair. They are tired. They were falling asleep during the interviews. They were sleeping on the conference table. They were falling asleep in the chairs. We have a health and humanity crisis going on uh, at, at these facilities, and we need to put these children back with their families. Many of the children, almost all the children that we interviewed, had family here in the U.S., and that's where they need to go. Just I know you're a professional and a professor and, and this is your job to document these things, but you just rattled off a lot. And I'm just wondering, I don't know, even know if you're a mother, obviously you're just a caring human being, but what was it like for you personally to see that? Well, let me be honest with you. Um, my children are, I have two daughters and they're nine and 16 years old. So they are exactly the ages of some of the children that we were interviewing. And, uh, you know, as a human being, as a parent, you know, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna wrap these children up in their arms, in your arms and try and comfort them and care for them as, as any decent human being would, would want to do. And so it takes a lot of um, strength and willpower not to go there because that is the human instinct is to care for these children and put them on the planes back to their parents which is what we would want someone to do uh, instead really what we try and do is create these one or two hours that we have with each individual child or e each sibling group and we just try and show them love and humanity in that interview and allow them to tell their story to us and then record their story so that it can be put onto sure. the court record sure sure um, and official responded to all of these reports and said, quote, it's all about perspective uh, and that this is better than it was before. Your reaction to that? I was not at this facility before. I can't imagine it being worse than what we saw this week. These children are being treated inhumanely. They are unhealthy. There's no soap. Their, their health and well-being is being harmed, and we need to make sure that these children are taken out of there. But I can't imagine it being any worse than what we saw this week at the Clint Border Patrol facility and last week at Ursula when we had to get a preemie medical attention because the, the child appeared to be dying. There are almost half a dozen children who have died in recent months in these facilities, and now we know why. I just hope everyone stopped what they were doing and listened to everything you just said. Warren Benford, thank you so much for the work you're doing and for uh, bringing a light to people who uh, don't seem to have a voice right now. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke.